this is probably going to be the last video about Bolt New versus Bolt DIY comparison because I have created a very detailed comparison video where I have actually tested Bolt DIY with almost all of the free and paid large language models. You can watch this video here. This link is provided in description as well. In that video, we have briefly tested Bolt DIY with Gemini 2.0 and DeepSeek version 3, Anthropic Cloud, and even Grok and Llama 3.3 uh, 70B. We have tested like all of these large language models with Bolt DIY. And to be honest, the results were, I mean, not really good. At the end of that video, I shared actually a conclusion that how you should use Bolt.DIY. In Bolt.New, you can share any sort of prompt, maybe like a very long prompt and with like a very long screenshot from the image of your website to replicate some sort of like certain website design. But in Bolt.DIY, we actually tried to like share a website design and a large image of website design and even like a smaller image of website design, even just a header section. But it did not allow us to like create or replicate those designs using uh, reference images because always it gives an error to like that the tokens are exhausted or we cannot use this much tokens. So that's one problem. Even we tried that with API keys like paid LLMs like DeepSeek version 3 and then we tried with Gemini 2.0 as well. We tried with Grok but there were errors every time we tried it with any of these large language models. Even if you provide a very long prompt with all of the details about what you are actually going to build, it will still actually have error. So the solution for these things to use locally with any like free large language models is actually to use it with the proper strategy. So let's suppose if you have a very long prompt that you wanna use, so try to make like break it down. So let's suppose just give it an initial instruction to set up a project first, then give it another set of instructions to make like maybe like create a kind of a design uh, architecture. And then after that, just give it like a more detailed design instruction. After that, give it a functionality instructions, but it takes a lot more time to like create something simple in comparison to Bolt Art New. In Bolt Art New, you straight away just like can create like a very useful landing page or like a tool with very basic prompt or even very very detailed prompt or even like providing a proper reference designs and everything so bold.new like outperforms bold.diy there is no comparison that was actually conclusion after that video so the reason why i'm recording this video because actually i realized that a lot of people were still like asking like a lot of questions. So I was like, okay, let me just like be very fair and recommend you guys the right tool to, to use. So if you are looking to develop something serious, something major, something that actually can be used by thousands of other users, then I recommend you using neither bold.d nor bold.new. I recommend you using like proper native AI code editor, something like cursor, something like windsurf, something like a.dev any of these code editors I recommend using that you can install locally on your computer. You can set up your environments and everything and you have complete control over your code. But I know most of people actually go with these web-based, cloud-based AI code editors because they think that it's easier to use and it's easier to like create stuff and then because Bold.new now has like option to like integrate Superbase and then deploy directly with one single click. But that convenience actually comes up with, with a lot of restrictions and a lot of limitations. So that's why I actually recommend if you are serious about developing something, something nice and something good, use something that can be installed natively on your computer. And if you don't wanna pay for anything, I recommend you using maybe like a free version of, of cursor. That is good enough to like create something good. If you know what you are, what you are going to build, then I recommend you using aid.dev. So aid.dev is a really nice tool mm -hmm. that actually gives you a freedom to actually like develop anything. The free version of this tool actually gives you 50 free prompts. So I have used this tool for several days and I came to a conclusion that this tool actually writes more code than cursor or windsurf out there in one prompt. So if you have like in briefly explained what you're looking to develop, it will actually then kind of like create that tool in one prompt like literally with 50 prompts you can you can like properly like create a very like sophisticated software like you will have enough freedom to like customize your 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 piece of software the way you want and so th that's what i actually recommend you or you can use just trial version of cursor or windsurf but th that's my recommendation if you want to take like ai coding seriously and if you're actually looking to develop something serious in in you by using these tools let's come back to our topic that should you use bold art new or should you use bold diy locally and with the free api keys something like gemini 2.0 
Standard or like Rock. If you are looking for a convenience and you're you only have these two choices, either go with Bolt dot new and either go or go to like Bolt dot DIY. Then I I recommend you using mm. for convenience use Bolt dot new. If you don't want to like waste too much time on like setting up things and setting up project and then avoid getting all of those errors that we get in Bolt dot DIY. So I recommend you using Bolt dot new. But if you have enough time and if you like if you wanna like try it absolutely for free, if you don't wanna like pay twenty dollars at all, so yeah, sure go with, go with uh, Bolt dot DIY. It's, it's it's good enough for you to like start. It, it's good enough to like build something basic, not too complex. But then you have to keep in mind that you have to like use this tool with a proper strategy. You should know what you're building, and you should like like make sure that you are not being detracted from what you're building, and you are giving the right prompts with the right words using the right keywords. And you have to keep in mind that if it if the tool gets detracted and it it is like consuming too many tokens, so free API key that you'll be using most probably from Gemini to Pandora maybe. Croc, so that will actually stop you from from like creating a more like consuming more tokens. So just keep that in mind. Yeah, I think we should now understand that. And if you like are absolutely beginner who have no idea about writing code, I recommend you using like watching some some videos about about cursor or windsor. All of these tools are like 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 super easy and super simple to use. It cannot be easier than this to to like use these kind of AI code editors and then build something serious. So, if you are looking to build something serious, use these native code editors. Like, um, uh, like the, the all of these are actually VS Code fork. Um, literally, I mean, all of these are like just forks of VS Code, but they work. I mean, they they do the job. The agentic functionality in A dot Dev is really good. The agentic functionality in Cursor is now like improving day by day. So yeah, I mean, cost for Cursor is again cost for Windsurf is fifteen dollars, and cost for A dot Dev is twenty dollars. The difference between A dot Dev and and rest of them is actually A dot Dev is unlimited. Windsurf was unlimited, not unlimited anymore, and there are like a lot of disruptions while you using Cascade feature. So, so yeah, I, I recommend you like spending some time understanding these tools because now in 2025 it has been super super easy. It has never been easier this much to like build something. Some like good softwares because I have been in software engine uh, industry since 2015. I have like. Like hundreds of clients all over the world, and this has never been easier to build software than 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 now. I remember like even building something basic, we used to like spend months and months in like just like finalizing requirements, and then further six months for develop front end development and back end development. So like a good kind of software that you can actually launch a bug free software after testing and everything. Used to take like years, and now we can build that on a weekend. So that that's that's the beauty of of using AI. So just if you are serious about it, involve yourself in the research process. Involve yourself, but do your learning. Be passionate about it, and set up a local like IDE on your computer. Set up cursor, windsor, or whatever any other software that you can actually install locally on your computer. That will actually give you a lot more freedom. It won't because all of these web-based AI code editors. Are actually, they will keep you handicapped. There is another good option. Actually, it's called Project IDX from Google, but that's super slow. I mean, you cannot build anything. I mean, if you're used to of like getting quick response from AI agent in Cursor and in Windsurf, and you want like Project IDX because that's just too slow. But it's free. I mean, it's free. You can bring your own API key, uh, just like a Bolt or DIY. You can bring your own API key. It has more freedom. When it comes like building something serious, and even like it has native natively all of this project settings for Android and Flutter, that means you can build cross-platform applications for both Android and iOS. So, so yeah, all of that is there on Project Ideas. So you can go with that kind of feature as well. But again, that's super slow. That doesn't work. It crashes so much time. It will it will just like not work the way. I mean, so far best options that I have realized. Like if you're looking to build something serious, go with Cursor, Windsurf, uh, A dot Dev, or any of these kind of like Visual Studio folks out there. So just use any of these. I recommend you paying fifteen twenty dollars for these tools rather than like paying twenty dollars for Bolt Art New. So that's more value of money. Of your money for these tools, so that's these. I think these these are my final notes. And if you still wanna like try Bolt or DIY, go ahead. No problem with that. It's good, but it will take a lot more time. It will create a very average code somehow. It's far more different than Bolt or New. It's not that great. Doesn't matter if you you are using plots on it, like open like all of these expensive large language models. It won't make a difference in the final output, final quality, until unless you're using it very strategically. That I have explained in that other video. So just watch that. I see you next video. Bye bye.